Okay guys, let's continue with the next method for appointment of an agent by necessity. Okay, this is based on uh, section 142 of the Contracts Act. Stated that this is a situation where a person may become the agent of another without having appointed as agent. Uh, okay, and normally appointment by necessity happen when a person has uh, been given an order by the principal in order to perform a certain act. Okay, so um, for the explanation of this uh, provision, an agent has authority in an emergency. Okay, so this is the uh, keywords for necessity. To do all such acts for the purpose of protecting his principal from loss, as will be done by a person of ordinary prudence. Examples of appointment by necessity. Okay, first situation we look into the relationship between husband and wife. A wife who is deserted or who is justified in leaving her husband and has no means of support can pledge her husband credit for necessities of life according to the income and positions of husband even against his wishes. Okay, so this situation shows us that um, we consider the emergency situation and wife can be regarded as an agent by necessity. Okay, for commercial matters, when a person is entrusted with another's property and it becomes necessary to act to preserve that property although he has no express authority to do so. Okay, under the second situation, this is very important. Okay, this is where a person okay, receive instructions from another person Okay, and then he is entrusted uh, with another's property. So he must do any necessary uh, act in order to preserve that property. In other words, in order to protect uh, his principal from suffer loss. Okay, landmark case for a necessity. You may refer to the case of Great Northern Railway Co. against Swaffield. In this case, Okay, the facts of the case, the railway company carried the defendant horse to its destination. On arrival, there was no one to meet and since the station master did not know the defendant or his agent's address, he instructed that the horse to be put in a stable. So, this shows the necessary situation. Okay, where the horse must be put in a stable in order to safeguard the horse. And later, the railway company claimed for the charge for the stable from the defendant. However, the defendants refused to pay. So, the court held that in this situation, the plaintiff, okay, the railway company, had acted as agent of necessity in this matter. So, their claim was successful. Okay, why they can be regarded as agent of necessity? Because they face the uh, difficulty. Okay, or emergency situation because no one uh, to meet. Uh, so, they don't know uh, how to contact with the defendant. Okay, and then they must put the horse to, uh, in order to safeguard the horse. So, they have to put it in a stable. Okay, so they can claim the cost uh, for the stable. Okay, in order to fulfill... Uh, the appointment by necessity, there are four conditions must be fulfilled. So, when I say four conditions, meaning that you have to apply four situations uh, in order to answer problematic question on uh, necessity. Okay, the first condition is there must be a real and actual emergency. Right, so the first condition is very important. Okay, uh, example, eh, the previous case, okay, the act of the agent, the railway company to incur costs in renting a livery stable for the night was considered as a real emergency because they need to preserve the safety of the 
horse. Okay. Second condition, it is impossible for the agent to get the principal's instruction. This is the keyword. Okay, you must prove that agent had tried to communicate with the principal but failed to do so. Okay, so they failed to contact with the principal. Let's say the they are uh, loss of a uh, poor internet connections. Okay. So uh, you may refer to section 167 of the Contracts Act. It is the duty of an agent to, in cases of difficulty, to use all reasonable diligence. All reasonable diligence here meaning that all the reasonable methods okay, in communicating with his principal and in seeking to obtain his instruction. Okay, so at least the agent must do something in order to communicate with his principal. However, Okay, agent may use his own discretion to take necessary step if he's attempted to obtain the principal's instruction fail. Okay, let's say the agent have um, put so much effort to contact with the principal but still unable to contact with the principal so they can use their own discretion. Example of case is a Springer again. Great Western Railway Company. In this case, defendants agreed to carry the plaintiff tomatoes from Jersey to Convent Garden Market. So, in this case, defendant has been entrusted uh, to carry the plaintiff tomatoes. However, okay, they face this uh, emergency situation. Okay, the ship arrived late due to bad weather. Defendants' employees were on strike, so the casual laborers unloaded the Tomatoes. Some of the tomatoes were found bad. The defendant then decided to sell the tomatoes locally as they believed that the tomatoes were not in sellable condition when it arrived at the Convergado market. Okay, please look at this uh, sentence. Okay, whether they have tried to contact uh, with the plaintiff, the principal in this case? No, okay, because they just decided to sell the tomatoes locally. Ah, okay, they fail to communicate their decision to the plaintiff. So, in this case, whether the plaintiff can claim for damages in conversion based on the market price? Yes, okay, the plaintiff is entitled to do so because defendants were not agents of necessity because they failed to fulfill the second requirement which is to communicate uh, with the principal. The third condition, agent was entrusted with the principal's property or goods. Okay, so the goods is in the hand of the uh, agent. Mm, okay, as uh, stated in a case of Jebara against Ottoman Bank, it was held that a person is entrusted with the goods of another when he is being instructed to deliver the goods to certain destination and where at that time emergency occurred while the goods are under the responsibility of the agent. Okay, and last but not least, the agent of necessity has acted in good faith. Okay, so how to prove that agents of necessity has intention to act in good faith? Okay, this is where okay, agent puts the interest of the principal above his own personal interest okay so anything uh done by the agent is for the benefit or for the um in order to protect the interest of the principal okay so if you are able to fulfill these four conditions then a person can be regarded as agent by necessity and the last method of appointment of agent made by estoppel. Okay, estoppel is defined under section 119 of the Contracts Act. This is also called as apparent or ostensible authority. If a person by his words or conduct allows a third party to believe that A as his agent when A is not. So, please understand this uh, um, sentence, okay? 
allows a third party to believe that A, A is actually not his agent. Uh, okay, but they allow or they represented to the third party that A as his agent. And the third party relies on it to his detriment. In other words, the third party believe of the uh, statement made by the principal. Eh? And that person will be as stop or preclude from denying the existence of his authority. Okay, this is because the third party already assumes that A as his agent. So, he cannot deny anything. Estoppel is a doctrine whereby a person is prevented from denying another person's authority as he had out the person to be his agent. Had out normally means uh, represented. Uh, okay. So there are two situations where you can apply an agency by estoppel. First, when the principal himself induce the third party to believe that a person has an authority to act for him as if that person is his agent. In other words, by conduct okay, or by a representation made by the principal in front of the third party. So here, the principal is stopped by the law from denying the agent's authority. And the principal cannot avoid the liability upon the contract being made by the agent. Okay, for example, I'll give you one illustration. Okay, between Ali and Abu. So, let's assume that. Um, okay, we have Ali, Abu and the third party, Chong. Okay, in front of the third party, Chong. Ali said that Abu as his agent but in fact it was not. Okay, so actually Abu is not his agent but Ali represented in front of Chong that Abu as his agent. So Chong believed of Ali's statement and Chong entered into contract with Abu. Okay, so later Ali cannot deny the authority of Abu because the representation just now made by Ali, made by himself. Okay, for the second situation, when a principal does not inform or announce to the third party that his agent has no authority or the agent's authority had been terminated but the agent still continues acting on behalf of that principal, so later on the principal is as stopped to deny the agent's authority for making such contract on behalf of the principal with the third party. So, in this situation, the principal would be liable for the contract made by such agent irrespective whether the agent had acted with or without the principal knowledge. Okay, under the second situa situation, sorry, the keyword is termination. Okay, let's say we have Ali and Abu. Okay, they are both. Um, Prince Ali is a principal and Abu is agent. Okay, however, uh, the agency contract uh, made between them already uh, expired. Okay, maksudnya dah terminated. Okay, but Ali fail to inform to the third party Chong. Okay, but Chong still believe that Abu as Ali's agent continue to contract with Abu. Uh, okay, so in this case, Ali cannot deny the authority of Abu uh, because he failed to inform or announce to the third party that Abu has no authority or um, Abu's authority had been terminated. So, only two situations eh, in order to apply uh, agency by estoppel right okay uh, next classes of agent i think that you can read by yourself here this is where uh, we uh, classify the agent based on uh, functions okay based on functions and then based on authority 
Okay, and for the authority of agent, okay, this is also simple, which you need to know that um, agent has authority and it can be classified into two actual authority, which is normally derived from the agreement made between agent and principal. And appearance or ostensible authority here means based on estoppel situation just now, okay. The one that I explained just now, uh, apparent or ostensible authority, okay, based on two situation, okay, based on the representation or conduct made by principal, uh, okay, just now I explained to you section 119 and then uh, the, regarding the termination of agent but without notice given to the third party. So, sama juga dengan uh, appointment of agent by estoppel. Okay, right. So next we continue with the most important parts under law of agency, okay, duties of agent and principal.